So what do you make of Donald Trump? I mean, is he damaging to discourse in that way because his positions are so entrenched? Is he damaging to the conversation? And you, are, you were a political journalist. Yeah. So what do you what do you think I about mean, what's happening? I mean, Donald Trump is just is just modeling an extreme version of of, of what we have what we have set up as the way, uh, you know, the way you get ahead. Um, he's got a big platform. He's got a big platform. What I, I have a lot of thoughts about. Donald Trump, but my my lens on things tends to be the kind of human condition lens. And so when I look, what I see, what I'm thinking about as I look at this entire election, but certainly the Trump campaign and and some of the mo those most really discouraging gatherings, yeah, um, where people are fighting, yeah, is there's a huge amount of human raw human pain and fear in those rooms. And, you know, I think a hallmark of our age, so, you know, we, there's a lot to be, to be worried about in the, in, this, in the early 21st century, but really the last century was so much more harrowing. I mean, we don't, we don't live in a time where governments are actually slaughtering millions upon millions of their own citizens and the citizens of neighboring countries. We don't, we don't live with that magnitude of economic depression. The thing is, human beings, we are actually hardwired to know what to do in a real crisis, right? Mm -hmm. In that kind of existential threat and where there is a real enemy. This also mobilizes us. Yeah. We, physiologically, we, we've been equipped it's like fight or flight, right? Yes, we yeah. know how to fight and we know how to shut down and protect. What we're not so equipped to do is live with open questions and uncertainty. And the people, those among us who feel most vulnerable, most threatened by the potential outcomes of those open questions and that uncertainty, uncertainty actually makes human beings a little crazy. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I think that that's what we see right now. I think that that is what I see when I look at those campaigns. It's, and some of that energy, you know, there are places where it turns violent, and some of those people, and some of that energy is, is dangerous, and we need to protect ourselves against it. But I think we do a disservice to our common life when we imagine that all of that is dangerous. When we don't take seriously that fear and pain that is absolutely justified, um, I think that there's a place in our culture right now, and I would hope that maybe coming out of this presidential election, like some of us can decide that our role culturally is to help calm fear. And in, and, th and that has, you know, I see that as a very practical move to gently separate that fear and that pain from dangerous ways they can get manipulated. Um, How you know, do the you thing calm? that Donald Trump does, and the, thing that, and the thing that Bernie Sanders does too in a very different way is, you know, they say, I can tell you what the problem is, right? Like calming this uncertainty thing. I can tell you what the problem is. I can tell you what the solutions are. And by the way, here's the enemy. Mm. Right? Giving, giving, giving human beings a clear enemy, in fact, is calming mm. when we're at our worst. But so, with Donald you know, Trump and Bernie Sanders well, are the playing enemy on his is fear. Wall Street, yeah. or the enemy is Muslims. Right. And that know? calms or, people? It doesn't make them more angry, you think? Um, well, it makes them angry, but it, it gives them something to work with. Right? Whereas the uncertainty is just this, just creates this free-flowing anxiety and it, and it ratchets this up. So yes, it, it then um, activates this place in us that knows what to do. We're going to fight. 